I began this uh, series with a somewhat uh, controversial statement in that uh, I said that Orwell, George Orwell, had stated that um, hypocrisy is the English vice, the British vice. And I said that it's actually the Canadian vice, but you know what I mean. That's kind of being a little bit racist or ethnocentric or whatever, saying that a particular group of people are more prone to a particular vice. Leaving that aside, um, I think that, it, that there is a certain amount of usefulness that that kind of statement can have, because it points out the fact that however good everybody is, and, and George Orwell actually, uh, for all his ranting against how bad the British, in particular the English are, was rather, in a, if anything, slightly pro-British, pro-English in his attitudes. He believed that uh, as far as civilizations go, his, the British one, was actually a pretty darn good one, and that it had values that were of use to everybody. He would say that, of course, being an Englishman, but, uh, actually, although I think he was a Scot, but um, but uh, he, uh, he did actually have uh, an enormous amount of criticism that he believed needed to be leveled at the English people. The British in, in particular, uh, the British in general, rather. He said that, again, hypocrisy is the British vice. And that always makes me interested um, uh, when I'm talking about the subject of ethics in general, um, that idea of hypocrisy. If you're lecturing someone else on their ethics or how they should improve their ethics, how is, how is it possible to not be a hypocrite? How can anyone ever lecture anyone on anything from a moral standpoint? Think about that. How do you not be a hypocrite in terms of discussing morality? I think that that's a very vexed point, and it, it's one of those things that I believe that, in a sort of conspiratorial kind of way, that the Catholic Church deliberately does to its... Uh, adherence in terms of uh, the manufacturing of Catholic guilt. Um, it's impossible, essentially, to talk about morals and ethics with someone else without being hypocritical, or at least to have uh, certain opinions on moral and ethics, morals and ethics. Because, okay, I, let's say that I decide, for argument's sake, that I want to be a vegetarian because I want to. Um, I, I think that it's unethical to eat meat to uh, to facilitate the harming of animals for human use. Okay, that's all very well. Um, but why do I do that? Well, because it's unethical to harm other beings, and it's unethical to, to act unethically. But the problem is, when when I do that, then I run into the, the other problem of, well, how do I get other people to see why I'm doing this? And what ways am I morally amiss or ethically amiss in other parts of my life? For example, the angry, militant, vegan or whatever who uh, meat is murder you know etc etc I'm not that, that's a stereotype I understand that um, but you know you filthy horrible person who's eating meat you butcher or you murder or all this kind of thing which is extremely rare except for in anti-vegan uh, caricatures but there's a subliminal amount of that in uh, a noticeable subliminal uh, critical mass of that sort of thinking in a lot of vegan discourse um, that somehow you're less ethical as a person overall if you eat meat. Um, now, again, this is not limited to vegans, to people who want to avoid cruelty to animals. But it also actually raises the point of, okay, it's unethical for me to eat meat, but how ethical is it for me to berate and denounce other people for whatever reason? It's not ethical. We know that it's not ethical to do that. We know that it's unethical to guilt people, to shame them, uh, that we're messing with their minds, and that guilt and shame are uh, the, the nuclear energy of uh, mind games. These are the, the, the bombs that people throw at each other that can destroy someone's sanity, guilt and shame. Um, so how ethical is that? Um, so how do we actually act as an ethical person in this world, or promote ethics, with, without being a hypocrite? It's not possible. <laughs> to be human is to be a hypocrite. Okay, it's, it's not possible to be consistent in all things and consistently moral. Now what? What do we do about the fact that if I'm moral in one way, I'm immoral in another, 
Or if I'm uh, unethical in one way, I'm ethical in another. What do we do about this this consistency, this inconsistency that is seemingly at the heart of being a human being? What I would say is, we do the best that we can with the tools around us, and always maintain um, in our minds the limitations of our tools. Our, um, our, our ability to judge whether or not anyone else's actions are ethical. The judge not lest ye be judged bit that you see in the Bible. Um, there's nothing wrong with trying to spread ethics, but you can spread ethics without being judgmental and without cheating. It's called um, leading by example. For example, two enormously powerful people in the previous century. Adolf Hitler and Mohandas Gandhi both had the capacity to use their charisma to get right inside their followers souls as it were metaphorically speaking what were the difference uh, or what is the difference between the way Hitler and Gandhi used their charisma it's an interesting question isn't it Hitler's power wasn't just the, his control of the secret police apparatus and the military of the Third Reich. Um, his power that he had over his followers was over their hearts and minds. Gandhi didn't even have any overt physical power, but his power over his followers was enormous. What's the difference between the two? Thank you.